So in my previous session, I talked about the genetic basis of uh, genetic basis of uh, very natural variation which occurs, and then how traits as defined by Mendel controlled by alleles or alternative forms of uh, genes present in a system. So a direct relationship could be established as of now between phenotype and the gene and uh, in between you have the protein. So gene, protein and the phenotype. And we also saw that how these genes are um, expressing themselves in a prokaryotic system in a regulated and controlled manner. In this session, I will very briefly touch upon uh, the scenario, what is going on in the eukaryotic system. Eukaryotes provide a very uh, complex scenario of uh, regulated gene expression. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> when we talk about uh, gene expression, we are talking about the gene involving first step transcription to make RNA and then translation to make protein. And when protein is made, protein has to be active and should be performing its function, whatever it is supposed to do. So a gene is considered to be expressing itself if it is making RNA, protein, and protein is active and, and doing its function in the cell. So there are various steps involved in eukaryotes and therefore make this scenario a lot more complicated as compared to uh, the prokaryotes where you saw that it's the simple uh, transcription um, uh, which is coupled with translation, okay, and uh, there is no cellular compartmentalization, you know, uh, but when we see in eukaryotes, scenario is slightly uh, different, you know, that is you have the nucleus, you know, and the cytosol. So one step of gene expression that is transcription takes place in nucleus, you know, and it results into formation of mRNA. Then it is taken to cytosol where it gets translated, which forms uh, protein and protein is active or inactive protein. It can be both active and inactive protein. So that's the uh, the, the simple flow of uh, uh, activities from in nucleus in cytosol. In nucleus, you have uh, the very first control is at the transcription level, or what we call it here. So either the transcription will take place or will not take place. That's one. And once the transcription has taken place and you have, uh, before the mRNA matures, it undergoes post-transcriptional processing. Okay. So, and then it comes out, to, it involves the mRNA transport and the localization of controls and the stability of mRNA is another checkpoint, you know, and then you have the translational control, whether the translation will take place or not, and then the uh, protein activation level, whether the protein is active or not. So, uh, so if you see here, in eukaryotes, you have one, two, three, four, and five, or six, six levels of control or a gene can be controlled either at the step one or two or three or four or five or six. So there are multiple levels at which a gene can be 
its expression can be controlled. Okay, so now we understand all these steps, how the, 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 the genes are controlled or regulated, uh, you know, at these steps. The mechanisms are very well worked out and I'm going to discuss with you very briefly what goes on at these steps. It's just a revision I think you would have done uh, in detail in your uh, previous lectures. So, <clears throat> If you see here, the first level is uh, uh, is the DNA methylation, you know, uh, and that is directly, you know, I told you in the when I was talking about organization of uh, uh, of uh, uh, genome, where I said that uh, the chromatin is uh, either heterochromatin or uh, uh, or euchromatin. So heterochromatin is the one which is tightly packaged and it is transcriptionally silent, basically. Okay. And uh, one of the processes which is involved in this transcription inactivation is the methylation. So heterochromatic DNA is methylated and therefore it is active, it's, it's transcriptionally inactive. Uh, and uh, um, uh, and uh, this methylation occurs at the CG sequences, very specifically here. And, uh, <clears throat> and what is seen that the DNA, which is transcriptionally active, in that DNA, the methylation is very, very less as compared to the uh, non-transcribing DNA. You know? You know? So uh, methylation is the one process which uh, straightway makes uh, uh, DNA transcriptionally inactive. And as if, if, if you recall, in, uh, I told you that, uh, that it's, it's the very uh, small portion of the genome which is transcriptionally active. And in that also you have constitutively expressing genes and then you have the regulated genes. And I'm talking about this regulated gene, you know, the, the, the constitutively expressing genes are simpler genes here also, which have uh, is a very simple transcriptional unit associated with uh, um, the recognition of the transcription site and the, and the RNA polymerase binding site, and then the transcription moves on in the transcription uh, stop uh, uh, sites. Okay. But uh, these things which I'm referring to is uh, in, 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 in scenarios where a gene is regulated. Uh, and that is the one, you know, <clears throat> uh, a step that is the methylation part. So uh, the part of genome or the DNA which gets methylated is transcriptionally made inactive, you know. And uh, <clears throat> when we see uh, the second level is the histone modification, you know, that is uh, heterochromatin to euchromatin. You know, everything is uh, tightly packaged in a cell in the form of heterochromatin, but then uh, uh, the process of acetylation basically um, converts it to euchromatin, you know, which is transcriptionally active. So, and, and methylation is the one which uh, <clears throat> uh, leads to heterochromatization. Okay, so acetylation and methylation. Acetylation. Uh, uh, takes it to eukaryotic, uh, eukaryotic euchromatin level and makes it the DNA uh, transcriptionally active and the methylation makes it uh, uh, inactive and trans, uh, transcriptionally inactive. Okay. So uh, this is the first level of uh, gene uh, regulation. So any gene which is to be expressed has to be in euchromatic region and unmethylated, okay? Or any gene which is in heterochromatin or even in a euchromatin, if it gets methylated, it is not going to transcribe. So, so this is the first level of uh, uh, regulation. And then uh, one, another is the gene amplification. So <clears throat> that is because of the uh, repeated rounds of for DNA replication, it yields multiple copies of a particular chromosomal region. Like here, if you see, you know, this region is undergoing multiple replications, so it is 
one, uh, two copies to four copies and eight copies. And this increase in the copy number will lead to uh, formation of uh, more and more transcripts and then more and more proteins. So in a cell where a gene has been uh, amplified like this, is going to make more protein as compared to the uh, cell where it exists only in uh, two copies or uh, the basal uh, number of copies. So gene amplification is another, uh, another uh, um, method by which a particular gene uh, can be regulated. Okay, so if we come to the transcription level uh, control, you know, transcription level means uh, <clears throat> when the RNA polymerase binds and the transcription takes off for a specific gene. Okay. So it's, you know, you see, this is the promoter region where we have this data binding uh, uh, box. So uh, and then it is basically the first level of, uh, you, you can say, uh, it, 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 this, this is the general transcription factors, you know, which are, res which are responsible for bringing about the transcription of structural genes here. You know. So promoter part, but in addition to this, you know, you have these uh, gene control uh, or transcription control regions, you know, regulatory sequences are there, you know, then, uh, you know, and then uh, you have the, the gene regulatory proteins here. So basically what happens that these regulatory uh, regions play a role uh, with by, by, by uh, when they get bound by the gene regulatory proteins like this, and then they drive uh, or activate this uh, transcription complex or what we call transcription initiation complex. Okay, uh, to drive a particular uh, uh, the transcription of a particular gene, you know, in absence of these proteins, this even if the, this complex is generated, the transcription is not going to uh, start. You know, so <clears throat> these are enhancers, huh? yeah, basically silencers, or uh, uh, then the, 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 running the. The various, I mean, different kinds of genes which are upregulated, downregulated, you know, or uh, silenced is uh, basically controlled by these regions in the gene which lie five prime upstream region of the gene, and this is the three prime and downstream of the gene, you know, uh, and you have in the uh, in this place is the transcription at uh, start side or zero, so from the is five prime upstream region and three prime downstream region. And these regulatory sequences exist in the five prime upstream region, you know, and they, they, for different genes, they, these proteins, regulatory proteins are different, which are uh, uh, activated or uh, uh, made by the, by the cell and they are taken to nucleus and then they drive the transcription of the specific genes, you know, I mean, either up regulates or uh, down regulates or silence. So, so at the level of transcription, that's how the genes are controlled. And then <clears throat> the post transcriptional, you know, the uh, post transcriptional processing that mainly involves the, uh, the splicing, the intron splicing. So, what is seen that, uh, that uh, a transcript made by the gene is uh, uh, the, the, the exons uh, and the introns are, are removed and the exons are united. So, for example, you have these uh, exons one, two, three, four, and uh, when it undergoes splicing, you know, these intron region are removed and you have one, two, three, I mean, uh, 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 I mean, this shows basically alternative splicing. So you can have either this combination of exons one, two, and three, or one, two, and four. You know, so here four fourth exon is missing, and here the, the third exon is missing. And this alternative splicing basically leads to formation of two different types of proteins in two different satellites. 
you know so gene is the same but the uh, the way that mrna is getting spliced alternatively then you have uh, the different products made in different cell types you see nothing i mean some cell uh, some genes they undergo this kind of regulation at the post transcriptional processing level where alternative splicing takes place then you know once the mrna is made and it is taken to cytosol the mrna stability is also uh, uh, controls the transcription or whether a particular protein is, is made or not in the cell and the very classical example here is the uh, the iron uh, uh, iron uh, uh, metabolizing uh, uh, system in the sense that the iron is a very important component for uh, uh, animal uh, system or humans for example i mean if there is the deficiency of iron it leads to uh, diseases and if there is excess of iron then also it leads to uh, the disease so so a, the iron concentration in the human blood is controlled very uh, very um, specifically and smartly and that is uh, uh, what happens that when iron is present and is taken up by the um, uh, the cells that is mediated by uh, a receptor protein that we call transferrin receptor okay and then in uh, blood or in the cells the iron is doesn't exist as free iron so it is bound by a protein so it exists as a complex iron protein complex you know that is the ferritin protein and, and both these protein regulation has been very uh, uh, clearly understood so first let us look at what is happening in case of the the receptor protein which is responsible to bring iron inside the cell so that is this receptor so what happens um and what, what happens here that uh, uh, the this is the mrna for the protein receptor protein and here you see a stem root structure created and it is stabilized by a um, protein nanticator protein which is the iron sensing protein actually if if there is there, there are irons it senses irons and complexes with this feature okay and uh, and uh, what happens uh, uh, and 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 uh, the, the the protein is made here okay and when there is uh, uh, and when there is uh, no rna you know then this complex is not formed and uh, um, and uh, the this mrna is degraded you know so in presence of iron transferrin receptor protein synthesis is reduced okay in presence of iron transferrin receptor protein is reduced okay and uh, in absence it is increased you know so that's how this complex and this protein uh, controls the stability of the mRNA. Okay. Similarly, if you look at the, uh, see here, this is at the three prime end of the transfer, uh, this complex formation. Similarly, here, if you see, this is towards the five prime side of the ferritin. And this is the mRNA coding for ferritin protein. And here also, this is acted upon by ferritin um, binding protein. So, you know, uh, this loop is and it is stabilized and what happens here the, this it doesn't allow the uh, translation to go beyond uh, in in case there is no iron in the system because there is no iron and no protein is required for binding purposes but when iron is present and uh, the ferritin protein is made because this loop this protein is not made the complex in protein and no loop structure is formed and you see the ferritin uh, protein is made you know 
So again, the stability of this mRNA in presence or absence of iron is regulated by the this uh, this uh, 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 the ferritin binding protein, uh, which, which is uh, which is uh, uh, when this complex is made, it blocks the, uh, the translation to move on beyond this. And, and when there is no iron, and when there is iron, this is not made, and you can see this <coughs> uh, the translation of ferritin protein is increased because in presence of iron, it is made. Similarly, control at the initiation of translation level. Yes, there are certain reasons like. Uh, the five prime uh, untranslated region or the three prime untranslated region, and they are the one which helps in translation. You know, if it is acted upon by some enhancers, then it enhances the translation, and if it is uh, acted upon by inhibitors, then it uh, uh, decreases the translation. So, some of the genes are uh, uh, are uh, translationally controlled by these enhancers or inhibitors, okay? And then the, once the protein is made, you know, uh, the stability of the protein is, uh, uh, is controlled by the ubiquitin, you know, which uh, stabilizes uh, the protein. And also the stability depends upon the kind of uh, amino acids it has at the end terminal line. For example, a protein, if it has uh, arginine and lysine, you know, its half life is three minutes, and if uh, if it is methionine and alanine, then the half life is twenty hours. You know, so the kind of uh, amino acid a protein has also determines the the, the stability of the protein. Other than the uh, ubiquitin uh, ubiquitin is uh, uh, ubiquitinization of proteins after translation to provide them stability. So another control level is this. And then you have the regulation of genes through hormones. You have protein hormones or protein based, peptide based hormones or destroyed hormones. You know, protein based horm uh, hormones, if you see, they cannot enter into the cell. So there are receptors in the cell membrane, you know, uh, which uh, perceives the signal. And then that signal is transduced to the nucleus and where, uh, where they act upon the specific uh, uh, response elements. You know, uh, here and induces the specific genes, you know, uh, uh, transcribe them and goes out and protein is synthesized. So that's how the, these hormones uh, uh, very specifically targets the, uh, the, the, the cells where these receptors are there to perceive these signals. And then those cells who, who are to be guided for their gene expression by hormone, like peptide hormone, respond to this and you see those cells behaving in a different way as compared to the rest of the cells where uh, where uh, these receptors are, are not present. So, it, I mean, the hormone is not getting into the, inside the cell, but uh, it regulates the gene expression from outside. But there is another class of hormones that you see, the, uh, the, the steroid-based hormones, where, uh, where, you know, this one, uh, where, where it physically enters into the cell, you know, and gets activated and interacts with the genome directly. Okay, so since it is uh, soluble, um, so it, uh, it it is lipid uh, based hormones, steroid hormones. Okay, and directly activates the genome and brings about. Uh, the transcription of very specific genes which respond to this hormone and you have to then the translation and the proteins are made. Okay, so this is another, um, and then you see the similar kind of uh, mechanisms are seen uh, of genes which are under control of different signals. Hormone is one example I took here, a peptide based, I mean the hormones which remain outside the cell and then uh, drives the genome expression and the one which enters into the cell like the, the steroid hormones uh, and then interacts with the genome directly and brings about the specific gene expression. So, so to summarize what I have tried to uh, tell you here is uh, that in eukaryotes the genome expression is 
very, very complicated. And as of now, we understand that it is regulated at the transcription level, um, the post transcriptional level, translational level, post translational level, and then, uh, you know, so a gene can be regulated at any one or more than one levels of controls. Uh, and this is, it is this control which makes uh, uh, the biological system a lot more complicated uh, to, uh, to understand and drive um, technologies in terms of, like if you, even if you have a gene in hand which is controlling a phenotype or a trait, you know, you have to also understand that how this gene is uh, regulated and until unless you uh, couple this structural gene with the, with the right kind of uh, response elements and the uh, enhancers or the regulators, regulatory protein genes, then it may not be effective in the, uh, in the recipient uh, system. You know. So if we, in biotechnology, we talk about, um, uh, we talk about uh, modifying, uh, modifying the biological system or the activity. And for that, it is very, very important to understand this aspect of uh, a particular gene which is controlling a trait or a phenotype that how their gene is uh, controlled and regulated within the system. So um, I'm going to now uh, 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 stop with this and uh, talk about uh, in one session various technologies which have been used to drive uh, these uh, informations which I have been talking about uh, and then we will go on to uh, look at uh, the you know, slave eye of uh, uh, this course of plant biotechnology. So thank you.